Okay. Hello, my name is Thomas Hatch. I'm the creator of SaltStack, and uh, I'd like to go over some of the architecture here, how it works, how things are connected, and we're going to be able to talk a little bit about uh, SaltStack topologies as well. So the core idea behind SaltStack is that there is a master server, and it connects to agents that are running out in your environment. We call them minions. And it's rather straightforward. It's able to send commands out to those, to those systems in perfect parallel, get that information back. And one of the reasons why salt's so darn fast is because we're able to do it in parallel. Um, and then all of these minions uh, are able to process that command and then return it. So pretty simple architecture for the baseline case. Now as things start getting more or less complicated, we've got more options. Salt just shipped with an SSH mode so that you can have any system out here that is able to directly send out to uh, external systems without having to install an agent on them. So we call it kind of the anti-topology because you don't need to set anything up. Of course, using SSH is substantially slower and less scalable than using the standard SALT hierarchy. Now, as we move through, though, we start to have more options. So, these commands that are sent out and executed on remote systems, these are asynchronous. And so, the command being run on that remote system, can the output can get redirected to any external source. We call this returners. And so when the command goes out, these guys can redirect it to something like a database or an external interface. So you can have a Redis database or MySQL or, well, any SQL or NoSQL database is supported at this point. Now we come through and another concept that we've got is called the syndic. Now this idea is that say this is one data center over here and we've got another data center over here and we want to be able to control those from a central location. What we can do is create a higher level master via the syndic interface. So think of syndic as being short for syndicate because what happens is this master sends a command down to its lower level masters and says hey publish that down for us. Publishes that information down to those masters minions and then they redirect that information right back up the chain. Again, making it very easy to either have distributed systems like this over geographically dispersed environments, or one thing that we see very common is that a lot of environments have a lot of different sections in them. Sections, departments, whatever they end up being called. And so those sections, they assign specific masters to them that are doing very specific tasks, but can then have them all being managed by this higher level umbrella. Um, let's see, the next thing that I want to mention is uh, something inside of SALT called the peer interface. So what the peer interface does is it says we're going to open up the ability, um, this is obviously closed by default for security reasons, but you can open up the ability for one of your minions out here to command other minions. And so you're able to say this guy can send a command, send a request up to the master to say, hey, I want to command these guys with respect to them doing something. This is a fantastic way to uh, implement continuous code delivery or something of that nature. Or it's a really good way to be able to query other systems. So you can get real-time information because this and all of these remote execution routines are blazingly fast. So you can get real-time information about infrastructure and you can do that in line with things like your config management system. So your config management system can say while we're compiling, let's make sure that we have um, information about our surrounding live infrastructure. We've actually had users go so far as to say that they don't need DNS internally anymore. So I'm not necessarily recommending that, but we have had people go that far with, uh, with using the peer interface. Now, one more thing topology-wise that, that I should mention is that uh, there's a system in SALT called the reactor. So the reactor sits up here on the master 
and then there's an event system. So everything in SALT is event driven. We send routines or return information back up to the SALT master. It fires events on the master's event bus. Now, when those events get fired, you can configure the reactor to listen to them and say an event came in, so this guy fires an event that says something's wrong. The event comes in and then the reactor is able to say, ah, I've got some logic to deal with this event and it wants me to notify some other system that something's wrong over here. Making it really easy to create this purely event driven reactive infrastructure. A really good example for this reactor system is that it's used a lot to, uh, for automatic code deployment and integration with Jenkins. So say we've got a Jenkins system sitting out here. When Jenkins is done with the build, it's able to fire an event on the SALT, on SALT's event bus because it's an open bus. You just need to grant a application uh, permission to fire on that bus. And then it fires on the bus to say, hey, this build's done. If you want to do anything about it, great. The reactor listens and then redirects that information back down to say, uh, let's go ahead and execute something relative to this. Now there's a lot of other components inside of SALT topology wise. Um, we've got the fact that you can hook into an external CMDB here. I should CMDB or database, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then use that data uh, and then use that data in part of your data management of your infrastructure. The SALT master can, correct, can, um, can directly connect to things like Git and Mercurial so that all of your config management components can exist in a Git repo somewhere. You never need to copy them down as files onto the SALT master and it translates things like branches and tags into environments inside of SALT. So all you have to do here is, is merge a branch and say, well, development, merge it up to QA or QA to prod, and you've directly changed the entire nature of the, your deployment directly from your Git, uh, uh, yeah, from your, the term just left me. <laughs> <laughs> directly from Git <laughs> or Mercurial. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that is um, the, the overall I shouldn't say the overall, a lot of the SALT topology explained very, very quickly. Um, we've got a number of slides and presentations online that go into a little more depth with a lot of these internal components. But thanks for your time.